Rob, what stood out at this year's Watches and Wonders? How about the fact that everybody didn't really release a bunch of stuff for the average person? Yeah, I, I looked at a lot of the things that stood out to me, and some of it was price on request. Or, you know, it, there was a lot of precious metal released from multiple brands. Yes. A lot of high-end complications. And I recognize that Watches and Wonders is a time to flex a little bit and show just how horologically awesome you can, you know, you can come out with a two millimeter tourbillon. Yeah. Or, uh, you know, a, a secular calendar like IWC did that's accurate for, you know, the moon phase for, what, four million yeah. years or something crazy. Yeah. I recognize it's time to flex a little bit, but it, it did seem like there was a lot more of the higher end stuff that not everybody's shopping for right now. Like, to be honest, I think the watch market is down and people are more selective with their discretionary income. Like I know Rolex is still selling really well, certain models are still selling really well, uh, but it seemed like we got a lot of the more unobtainium type of hypothetically, if you had the budget, how great would this be yep. type of release rather than hey, what came out under $5,000 that everybody is just super excited about? There was less of that than there was uh, of the higher end. I mean, if you're looking under 5K at Watches and Wonders. Tudor? Yeah. You have very, Nomos, very, very slim pants. Horus. That's what? what? <laughs> well, Frederic Constant. Yeah, Frederic Constant. Um, you've got Bell & Ross, do they have? And I mean, the, that's probably right there above yeah, five. Yeah, that's right close. In, right in there. There wasn't a lot. No, it's very slim pickings. But there was a lot of pretty cool stuff that kind of crossed that $10,000, sometimes $20,000 price segment. Yep. Um, I'm thinking Zenith did some cool stuff. The Skyline got a chronograph. They did a revival. They did a diver. They did some cool stuff, but it's it's still getting up there in price, you yeah. know, compared to... Uh, what a, a lot, lot of people are shopping for right now. It's a lot to pay for a Zodiac lookalike. <laughs> <laughs> it really is when you boil it down. Like, right, right. It, it's kind of lookalike. I, I really liked what Cartier was doing. They, they did some really elegant stuff. Uh, if I was in the, in the market for like a precious metal yep. mono pusher in-house chronograph, Ooh. Ooh. like... Uh, I'm excited oh, about it, but man. realistically, I'm not shopping for that okay, right now. Outside, outside of the two brands that we're not going to talk about. Oh, Rolex. And no, don't even say it. <laughs> outside of those names, Cartier won for me the whole the whole show. Yeah, they, I, that's probably killed, what I think too. They killed it. They had very classic offerings, whether it be the Santos, you know, and they 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 played around in some crazy stuff. Dual how, time. Yeah. How about Santos a, dual time? A Santos dual time. That is a great everyday watch. You don't you don't want to get a GMT master. You don't want to get, you know, something how about that? How about us? Yeah. You're a little off the beaten path. Anthracite a little bit. dial, Ooh, man. applied Romans. Yes. That's a hot looking it's watch. It's a great and it's a good building spot. It's a yeah. it's a spot to go, where else can they take this idea, right? A dual time Santos. Where else are you going to go with that? Yeah. Other colors, you know, whatever, skeletonized down the road, right? Sure. It's a good starting point. And, and you and I both love a good answer side dial. And they didn't start off, at least with that one, in precious metal like a lot of other brands do. No. You know, stainless steel, around 11,000. Yeah. It's still expensive, oh, but it's, it's still. Not, yeah, it's not cheap. A heck of a watch. It though. is a gorgeous watch. The, the Santos that got me, though, Rob, was. The brown dial, just the basic Santos de Cartier yep. with that fume brown dial. I saw one real world picture of it and my knees got a little weak. <laughs> I was like, I think this might be a possibility for me, you know? That that watch is a great conversation starter. Yeah. It, it exudes class, it exudes sophistication. It's eye-catching. It's eye-catching, but it sprinkles in some fun because of that dial. Yeah. Right? You know, whether you, and, and I actually do think it's more legible. That's, it's kind of been one of the knocks on the green and the blue was they're a little harder to read. Yeah. Right. And I wonder with that, because the green and the blue, they look very dark in person. Yes. Very dark. It, it, and the, the renders you see online, they're very vibrant and yep. colorful. They're, the light is just completely <laughs> yeah. bouncing off. But in real world, it's not how they no. look, you know, I, this brown though, I, 
I think it might be the most exciting one. Yeah. And you don't see brown done very often these days. No. I mean, it's heyday was what, like the 70s, yeah. you know? Yeah, but it's it's got some funkiness to it and it, it plays really well on the bracelet. It's gonna look killer on a strap. Yeah. Like, it's a great piece. Yeah, I, I I would agree with you there. And But on, on another note with Cartier, again, saying how they won the show, how about some crazy with a watch that runs backwards, uh, right? <laughs> like whether you love it, hate it, whatever, the yeah. fact that they did it, you know, and then the story about that, like apparently it was a piece unique that it started out as a piece unique from yeah. a Japanese architect uh -huh. that had wanted this, you know, thing and this whole concept of time, you know, really deep, deep, you know, internal thoughts about time and what that means. And then to have it end up in more of a, uh, a serial production run yeah. I thought it was fun, you know? Would I buy it? No. Probably not. No. Even Highly high. limited. Yes, highly limited. But it was awesome to see that they took a chance, you know, and did something fun. Conversely, what brands do you think just kind of either phoned it in or missed the mark and didn't have such a good show this year? Does any, does any brand stand out? I, it pains me because I'm a, I'm a fan. Okay. Uh, I'm a Paneristi. Yeah, they they really didn't do anything that was exciting. No, I think. No, I mean they're they're kind of Palagos esque, uh, sub submersible or whatever was like kind of the one thing that kind of got me excited. Uh, yeah. But other than that, like they kind of phoned it in. Yeah, and and I get it with the small trending watches. Like it's it's kind of hard for them because of the the corner that they've painted themselves in over their entire right. history like that's just not who they are mm -hmm. you know so they kind of they're have, drifting yes they did not have a great showing what about tag hoyer tag? i'm almost split on them because they did some kind of cool stuff the, the, but the then Panda there's glass top yeah but then there's a hundred and forty thousand dollar split second chrono right I, I know it's it's not for the masses but yeah and it's kind of a flex, yep. but at the same time, it's like, what are we doing here? You know, who's who's gonna buy this? And honestly, I don't know. You go. To, how about this? Go to the mall, go into the Tag Heuer yeah. uh, boutique, and tell me if you see anybody, because <laughs> you're not going to. You know, I'm gonna push back because a lot of people like Tag Heuer that are not crazy watch collectors. I yeah. I, th I think they probably sell more. Than the Breitling and Grand Seiko that they're right next to in that mall. My own opinion. Lower price point, <laughs> name brand recognition. Go okay. get a night diver. Okay, okay. Yeah, you got me there. They definitely sell more than Breitling. But but some of their stuff, it's like, yeah, I don't I don't know what they're doing. Like yeah. I really like some of their stuff, but uh, a lot of the other stuff, like I'm kind of hit and miss on tag right now. That's a fair assessment. I do think that they are up and down because yeah, the glass top stuff, like that's a cool chrono. Yeah. I really like that. But at the same time, like if you don't like Kronos, where do you go? The, or the, the Carrera line or whatever, like. Or you really like Kronos a lot, you like that watch, but Omega just did the white speedy. Which, right? Which buys, what are you gonna buy? It still has my heart. Yeah. It still has my, they released, Omega released that watch. How long before watches and watches? What, three weeks-ish, four weeks at the uh, most? Yeah, yeah. It's still, you could put it up on the wall and nine out of 10 people are still gonna put that in their top three, you know, releases. Yeah. It is that pivotal. <sighs> I've seen some real world pictures and it looks every bit as good as I thought it would look. You know, not, not, I'm not talking about renderings on Omega's website. Oh yeah. But like the, the people that have been fortunate to buy it, yep. post it on Instagram yep. and stuff, I think it looks really good. So although another brand like Zenith with their new Skyline chronograph or, or tag with the glass box, like some really cool stuff coming out. I think I still want to <laughs> gravitate towards this. I don't even have to say, because from the previous video we did, I, I went, I, you know, I waxed poetic about it. Like it is so freaking good. The yeah. white dial speedy decimated just about anything out there. Let me throw one more at you that I was kind of impressed with, and you might laugh at me. I know some people watching will laugh at me. Parmigiani Fleurier, Tonda, yep. they did a new, that like beautiful dial, stainless steel, got the bracelet, platinum micro rotor, $25,000. I think it looks really good. 
I love Parmigiani. Okay, all right, good. I, I, love, I don't think we've ever talked this No, we, re we really haven't. No, so I love them, and I love that they're just different enough. They, I mean, granted, it's kind of been to a little bit of a fault because they've had some stumbles through the years. Yeah. But the Culpa and some of these other versions that they've done through the years, they are a serious, serious watch manufacturer. Sure. And they're, they're you know, head man, uh, what's his name? My, uh, Michelle uh, Parmigiani. He is a serious watchmaker. Like, yeah. legit. You could put him up there with any of the greats. Yeah. You know? Like they, that's a good watch. So I, I looked at that and I was like, all right, I'm, I'm probably not realistically shopping this right now, no. but uh, it's one that I was like, hey, like this is a nice watch. Yes. Like, they, they didn't go overboard uh, when it comes to the pricing. Like, and I don't know if you can really when you've got Vacheron right around there, you've got some other watches. That, that's for somebody that, that buys the Parmigiani that doesn't want to. Yeah, the, the baggage of the the Holy Trinity. Yeah, you know they they can't maybe they can't get the Moser because it's sold out. You know, you just reminded me the concept, the green, yes, the bracelet, yes. the loom ring. Yes, I might be most excited about that. Like I'm uh, a Moser fanboy. I have been for years. Yeah, one of my grails is a Vanta black version. I won't limit myself as to which model, sure. but to get something in Vanta Black would be ideal for me eventually. But Moser, they quietly kill it time after time in their yeah. own little small market, you know? Knowing that they appeal themselves as very rare. Very rare. You know, you're not, you're not going to see them a huge, you know, presence. Yeah. They killed it. Did anything else stand out good or bad, either model specific or brand specific? Okay, I've got... I've got two. Okay. One, I, and I feel bad because here in a, on uh, recording, I forgot the name. Um, the Hermes, is it the Cutter or something? What, what is it? It was a 36 mil, time only, integrated still. Uh -huh. It kind of appealed more to the ladies sure. or, or, you know, it's definitely on the smaller scale of things. Sure. But it was like, I think it was like eight or nine, maybe 10 grand. To me, I love that. So you like that. I'll say I, I, I looked at it. Swipe. I mean, no! <laughs> no! You have such, like, visual, I don't know, like, it, uniqueness. The crown's at the two, you know? It's I, and I generally like stupid, off-the-beaten-path type I, of watches. I liked it. You, you liked, liked it. it. Okay. Cause, I mean, okay. I'll you take would, a second look at it. Take, take do, a do a proper look at it. Okay. Not just a quick little pass through. Am I saying is it's gonna like you know make Hermes like the you know whatever? No, it's gonna be a you know piece that's gonna be on thirty percent sell. You know they're gonna be hard to move. Yeah. But I liked it. It was like integrated steel sports watch ish, but not because again thirty six mil round case. It was just something a little bit different. Yeah, and I was like. Okay, I like this. No date, clean. I, I usually like their their design aesthetic with the fonts. You know, I like to nerd out over fonts. Yeah. I liked it. Okay. And anything else though? You said um, you had two things. Yeah. So and then I really really like LUC. Oh, they did well. They, they did really did well. Really yeah. really well. I thought that they they really pushed forward some strong offerings. Jumping hour. The jumping hour complication to me was. Very, very cool. I hope that expands. Like, uh, it's it's not common these days. Nope. But why shouldn't it be? It. How cool is it to look down at, you know, how about this? Christopher Ward. Bell Canto. Exactly. Blew up the watch world because Did. their watch makes a little dong on the top of the hour. Okay? Remove the dong and just look at that. I, don't, I can't say that. <laughs> Uh, the, ding. the ding. The ding. That's a better way to put it. Remove, <laughs> remove the ding, and you'll see the hour switch. It's the same. It's, it's, it's the, the same, same thing, thing. Yeah. and you, you don't have the annoyance of, well, I gotta, I have to silence my watch here. <laughs> well, let me let me try to bring it back. Yeah, <clears throat> my thought was, like, as a watch fan, I saw a lot of things that got me excited. You know, man, if I had the budget, how cool would this be? How cool would that be? You know, the, the just the straight up fan of me thought, hey, look at that thin tourbillon. Look at that mono pusher chronograph. Look at this stupid, huge, fat 
uh, yellow gold deep sea like the abomination. I, uh, yeah, <laughs> I thought it was cool. Like I, I got excited, but at the same time, there wasn't a lot, at least in my price bracket, that was realistic and attainable. Nope. You know, Oris did well with their Aquas. Uh, Nomos did well. I, 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 the Santos was, I was yes. referring to earlier really well, but it just it seemed like. This was the year that there was a lot of high-end stuff, yep. maybe more than years past, and less of thinking of the everyday watch collector in mind. At least that was my kind of general take off of uh, what happened. Oh, totally. Yeah. Totally. I mean, yeah, some of the stuff that you listed, they were just color iterations, and that's it. Like, the, the Nomos thing, like, there really wasn't something revolutionary under 5K. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so sorry. We got it. We got it. The video's over. As soon as I said that, I knew it was over. Like, there's no way we're, set, we're saving this. <laughs> I hope you guys enjoyed our uh, take of, yeah. of watches and wonders. Uh, Chris, some Warner, good stuff. Yeah, if you, if you uh, use that phrase, that, that's trademarked. <laughs> okay. Remove the dong. <laughs> good.